So welcome to Mornings with Mac, Rabba Bali Mwale. Thank you. Thank nice you, and early in the morning. You had I, had to wake to, up. I had to get up very early to be here. So what's, what's the first thing that you did when you woke up? I prayed. Oh, I, I, amen, <laughs> amen, brother, amen. Okay, all right. So you've got a very interesting story in life. Is it one of those rags to riches? Definitely rags from riches, uh, but it's not entirely that, that makes sense. Um, because I, I, I grew up being a very ambitious child. Um, I was an academic child, smart, head boy. So I've, I've always had a, a, a bigger vision for life um, and where I want to be. And it, it was going very well, it still is. It's just that there's perceptions in between that you know, one has to deal with. Um, and, and just also make sure that it does not really derail me from you know, doing what I want to do. Uh, but yes, definitely. Now, if you had three things to change with a magic wand, what would that be? <laughs> <laughs> Literally, three things. Whether it's, it's the past life, whether it's, you know, the future life, only three things with that magic wand. What would you change? The first thing would, would be thoughts around, around school and education and about young kids. I think parents must learn to allow their kids to become what they want. We are sitting with a lot of unemployed graduates and children because some of them went and did degrees they, don't, they did not even want to get into. All because my mom says I need to graduate and I need to do this and I need to confirm to society. So if, if I had a magic wand, I'd make every parent allow their kids to voice out what is it that they want and how they want it. I think the world would be a better place. Two. Keep, up, keep them coming, I'm waiting. <laughs> I'm very patient. I would get rid of any politician that is over the age of 40. Why? I think we'd do better with a younger cabinet uh, people who are in their 30s, even late 20s. Because I think we, we are of a better understanding of the type of society that we live in now. And your last one? <laughs> I, I would, look, I've, I've had a very interesting life. Um, no, you had a, you had a, yeah, from a very young age to old age, I think you had the most interesting, dramatic life ever. <laughs> You're like literally a Netflix series. I, I always say to people that one day I really want to write a book and, and I want to title the book What Usually Happens Over 12 Years Happened to Me Over Two Years. Um, I mean, we can go back as far as 2016 and 2017. Those two years uh, were so heavy that I don't know how I got out of them. Um, so, for the purposes of using the magic wand, I'd say I wish I had better calculated my moves back then as compared to now. And not that there are, there are any regrets, but I just wish that I would have been able to calculate everything that I did so that I could not find myself in a place that I was in in 2016, 2017 and a little bit of 2018. So would you say it was more of being unhappy in that phase? I think not time? really unhappy. It started um, off as happiness. It, yeah, and, and I think I've never went into something without fully applying my mind and applying my entire self. Uh, but I think at that time, I was also looking to see what's on the other side. Because even though I could not see beyond where I was, I was keen to be like, okay, if I do this, let's just see what's gonna happen. Let's just see. So, so I think it was just a decision that I took, wanting to see, but in the process of seeing, I could not go back. I just had to figure myself out in the fog that I was watching or, or that I was in, because I couldn't really calculate what was gonna happen in the next few hours, the next day, or even the next month or year. Um, because there was a whole lot of voices a whole lot of people who wanted to get to me and I kind of had to decide if I am drowning or I am swimming and if I'm going to get to the finish line. Now besides the drowning and swimming and the voices, let's yes. take them out. 
Now you mentioned that you wanted to see. Yes. Did you actually find what you're looking for? I think I did, but I don't know if this is going to make sense, but I only found out after everything happened. So it, it was not it, it was not in the moment. Uh, it was after. And you know, having to live your life, always having to look back to be like, okay, maybe I should have done this differently. Or maybe I could have spoken to this person. Or maybe I could have taken this decision. That's just how I pushed through. But I just reminded uh, myself that I, I really can't blame myself for the decisions that I take, even though I took them. But we, we, we do different things every day and it's okay, you know? Uh, I didn't want to shoot myself and be like, wow, you did this and you, you didn't want to, to do it. Now, how, I think in a situation like that, it's very difficult because it's more of an emotional roller coaster. Yes. So how did you manage to deal with those emotions? Sure, um, I think a, a, a support structure for my family is, is really what, what worked for me. Because there was never a point where I could not run to my family or, or call them. I mean, whenever, during that period, whenever I would feel overwhelmed, I'd literally drive home, get home, not speak to anyone at home, and walk straight into my parents' bedroom and get into their bed and sleep. Two hours later, I would wake up feeling very alive. That's where I drew my strength from because I felt a purpose again every time I would be in my parents' bed, not even bedroom, or, or, or even just be in that space. Then I knew that, okay, I'm going to gather strength and I'm going back to fight the world again. Would you say home was the place to be during all of those situations or those moments? Definitely. It's, it's, it's something I will never stop emphasizing that family, home, it's important. Because those are the people who will never say to you, who will never ask you questions like why or where or, you know, they'll really allow you to be and do whatever that you want without feeling judged or, or without them making you feel like you're a bad person for having taken certain decisions. So I definitely say home, family, all the time. Now, let's, let's go back a bit. The decisions you took, do you have any regrets? None whatsoever. I, I think I've, I've taught myself very, at a very young age that everything happens for a reason. And I wouldn't want to question the universe or God about certain things that have happened to me or in my life or around the people that I spend my time with. And I always believe that should it not be for me, eventually I will see it or I will get out of it. Uh, but if it is for me and I took that decision, then I'll run with it. So what is the one thing you find to be true that you know most people would, would disagree with? That it's, it's important for you to always, and I know people will, will really disagree with me with this, to always put yourself first. Um, we live in a world where everybody is hungry for something. And certain people will do whatever it takes to get whatever that they want. Respective of whether they like you or not, they will go for what they want. So don't live your life thinking that the next person is always thinking of me because that might be foolish. Not everybody is thinking of you, not everybody wants to see you win. So focus on yourself and do things for yourself. Even though people are like, no, teamwork, great and all, but when you go to bed, you alone. Now, you are a director of, what, five companies? Yes, five, seven, seven now. Seven companies! <laughs> <laughs> yes. And, and some of these companies, what, you started them during lockdown? Some of them, yes. I actually started my first company when I was 19. Wow. I had a dream of just opening the biggest um, transport company in Soweto to transport school children, because I've always loved children. And at that time, the idea came about um, with my ex-boyfriend. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I've, I've, been, I've been, to be honest with you, I've been seeing a lot of stories about it recently. And I, I just think, 
I probably you would feel the same that people need to respect. Yeah, yeah. you know, when, when it comes to that, I, I really just believe that I don't want to stop people from saying whatever they want to yeah. say. Uh, but I, I have a right to control my response and whether I want to respond or not. So out with the negative, in with the positive. It is what it is. It's, it's, it's a sealed chapter. You're yes. done with it. Yes. Mac, Mac Rapapali, Jacaranda FM.